Hi, welcome to a new video. My name is Dave Thomas, also known as 7 Sharp 9 and today we're going to be resurrecting the F Sharp Mono game series, our, our platform game, and we're going to be looking at all of the new features from F Sharp since that was written. So that's something like F Sharp 4.7, 4.8, version 5 and version 6. So these are not going to be massive differences, but they're going to be enough to improve the quality of our code base. So that's going to be the content of this video. So let's get cracking. Here we are in the development environment. I've already converted this project to F sharp six. It was just a simple, simply downloading the SDK and replacing the target framework with net six. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a feature from, it's a feature from F sharp 4.6, which is anonymous records. And if I remember correctly, there is a section further down where we return a tuple of a collision. Let me see. Okay, here it is here. So at the end of this function, we're returning a bool and a contact, but it would be nice to use an anonymous record for this. To declare them, we use the curly brace pipe syntax, and then we declare the label name for the record. Um, so we'll, we'll simply call this internal collision. And for the other label, we'll simply name it contact. So now you can see in the signature, we're returning an anonymous record, which has a contact and an internal collision. And you'll notice that it's flipped the arguments around because it puts the labels for the record in alphabetical order. So if we scroll down now, we should be able to change the usages of this to, to be that of the anonymous record. So in this section here, you can see that collision and contact is not been able to be assigned because we're returning an anonymous record. So if we change that to collision result, then we can make these more informative to the user. So it's a pretty simple change, but it makes the code a lot more readable compared to a tuple. Admittedly, in this case, it's only two elements in the, in the tuple, but with more complex code or refactoring, it often helps to use an anonymous record to, to get more context into the return types. Rather than just being a bool and a contact, it actually gives you a specific named label for the, for the entities. So I think the next feature that we can use is something from F sharp 4.7, which is implicit yields. Okay, I had trouble finding them there, but um, there's one here where in the in the creation of the tile set, we have to explicitly put the yield keyword. But for F sharp 4.7, we can use implicit yields, which means that things that are yielded implicitly, just as the name specifies. So we can simply remove the yield keyword like that. This is the other yield in the um, in the broadface tiles collection that we create. That can be removed just the same. So it kind of cleans the code up a little bit and it's it's quite, kind of nice. It's kind of obvious in F sharp when something's returning. The implicit yields kind of make sense in the in the broader scope of the language. So now we're going to move it into a feature from F sharp 5, which is better interrupt with nullable value types. In Monogame, there's a lot of use of nullable implicit conversions. So I know there's quite a few in, in this code base. We'll scroll to the top and we'll see if we can spot them. Okay, so, so here's the first one. 
In F# -sharp, we have to explicitly define that there's a, an implicit conversion going on, which is implicit in, in C# -sharp, in this monogame framework. You can see that sprite draw accepts a nullable rectangle. What this is doing here is effectively doing the implicit conversion that C# -sharp does, but in F# -sharp, we previously had to explicitly specify the implicit conversion. So now with this feature, we can just remove it and it cleans up the code quite a lot. And it's a feature that, that helps clean up this interop between different types of code bases, especially in different frameworks where these implicit conversions kind of clean up the C# -sharp code, but in F# -sharp it makes it more cumbersome because we have to explicitly define them. So now we can remove these. So here's another one, just the same. We can remove that and that cleans things up nicely. And again, another one that's cleaned up that nicely as well. And I think there's a, a couple more. So that's another one removed. So the next feature I think will be um, simpler indexing. In F# -sharp, we specify an index by using a dot, but in F# -sharp 6, this can now be omitted, so we can use the same kind of indexing as what's in languages like C#. -sharp. So coming from those type of languages, onboarding will be significantly easier. What I'll do is I'll begin to scroll up, and whenever we see an index, we will remove it, the dot anyway. Okay, so this one was staring at me in the face. So we can simply remove that and that kind of cleans up the indexing to make it more familiar to, to people coming from other languages. So I'm sure there's a few more in here. So let's keep having a look for those. Okay. There's another one. And another. And one more. So I think that's actually the last of those. Okay, that is the last one. The final thing that I think can clean things up and also probably increase performance slightly is struct representations for partial active patterns. Now we use a partial active pattern in here for the keyboard processing. So we can probably change that and uh, get a little bit of extra performance from the, the keyboard processing. So I'm going to scroll down to that section now. So for this section, I'm going to drop down a line and simply paste in attribute that we can use to apply this. Okay, so in addition to applying the attribute, we also need to modify the option types to be um, value types rather than reference types, as is the normal for, for options. So that's a value sum and value none. I should think that is all we have to do to get extra performance. So whenever the active patterns, um, whenever the partial active patterns are processed, it's allocated using structs. So it uses slightly less memory, so it'll be less effort for the, the garbage collector and it should result in um, better performance for the game. So with that, I think what we'll do is we'll start up a terminal. So we'll create a new terminal and We'll just run this to make sure everything still works. This is launched, but it's on my other window. So I'll drop this out of full screen mode. And you can see we've got a little skeleton on the screen. And everything still works. So that's looking good. So as you can see that there's quite a few little features that we've used and it's cleaned up the code base a little bit and there's probably other features we could use, but they're the ones that come to mind initially for me. I mean, if you spot anything else, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, but I think it would be good to explore this further by adding things like enemy players and the ability to shoot and things like that. That may be something I develop in the future, but I also would like to look at some things in Unity as well, because there's some so a whole host of new things in Unity, and I might use a mix of C-sharp and F-sharp to see how things go and to explore that further in the future as well. So I think that could be quite interesting. And Unity demos have been requested before for this channel, so that could be something worth looking at too. So as you saw, we've made quite a few improvements to the code base, and we could probably go further with using things like code generation in Myriad to reduce boilerplate and things like that. 
and that may be something that I feature in a, in a future video. But for the next video, it's going to be um, focused on all of the new features in Myriad. Um, since the metaprogramming series, since the last metaprogramming club series video, um, there's been quite a lot of new features added to Myriad. So I'd like to cover those because they're not very well documented or, or maybe it's not even documented at all. So I feel like um, the next video featuring that will be very useful for people wanting to look into code generation with F Sharp using Myriad. Um, so if you got this far um, and you enjoyed the video, leave a comment below. Um, even if you have any suggestions for further videos or any comments, please leave them below because I like to read those. And um, I will see you in the next video.